Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Saturday, September 19th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk football, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, the Canelo situation. I understand the court has asked Canelo's lawyers to amend the complaint. They should be able to do so, right? At issue, since they've chosen to sue in federal court, where presumably they're better judges. At issue is their ability to allege diversity jurisdiction. In other words, they have to allege that the parties involved live in different states. They should be able to do that easily, right? Don't be fooled by the PR people, by what's out in the news right now. Understand, even if Canelo can't allege diversity jurisdiction, if he wanted, he could go someplace where the zone has a principal place of business and sue the zone, right? It's just a matter of the forum in which the lawsuit is pending. Also understand, that this situation is highly combustible. If his relationship with Golden Boy Promotions falls apart, then the whole thing falls apart because Canelo didn't enter into a written contract with the zone. Right? So understand, the contract with the zone is between them and Golden Boy Promotions. So if Canelo is released from his Golden Boy contract as part of some settlement. That's going to send shockwaves throughout the sport of boxing. I understand Showtime, behind the scenes, is interested in having Canelo. Right, folks? In my opinion, it's not going to work at the pre-COVID price level at which Canelo negotiated, excuse me, Canelo's promoter negotiated its prior deal with the zone right under that contract canelo was supposed to get more than 30 million dollars every time he fought a premier opponent folks you're not going to get that price level now understand professional sports here in the united states the nba the nfl both have lower ratings the world has changed that earlier, the Zone Golden Boy contract was premised on a live gate. People being able to attend the fight. Perhaps site fees. Locations vying for the fight. Bidding up the site fee. Well, that's gone right now. Right? That Dylan White, Pavetkin fight, was fought on an estate. Right? Owned by Eddie Hearn's group. You have many fights right now taking place without crowds. How am I going to pay a guy north of $30 million to fight without a live gate? To fight without the crowd? Right? Am I going to get people paying for my service when you have very high unemployment? Very high unemployment claims. The restaurant sector, the hospitality sector, decimated economically. So pay attention to the Canelo situation. It's going to have repercussions. Let me also say this. In the complaint, it looks like Canelo, and keep in mind, Canelo's people filed the complaint, didn't want to fight Golovkin a third time because understand, that would have obviated the need for a lawsuit, right? It, it sounds like the zone wanted that fight and was prepared to pay big bucks for that fight. Well, understand what might happen. If Canelo breaks with Golden Boy, we might never get that third Golovkin fight. Never. Let me also say this too. Let's say Canelo fought Golovkin a third time. Understand the score right now is Canelo won, the draw column won. 
So if Canelo fought Golovkin a third time, and let's say he lost, but let's say it was controversial, then my goodness, there'd be an outcry for a fourth fight. You'd have a lot of guys in boxing who are deserving, who'd be left out of the big money. I'm guessing the zone wants another Canelo Golovkin fight because the first two made a lot of money. So if Canelo fought Golovkin a third time, made big money, and then there was an outcry for a fourth because the scoring of the third fight was questionable, uh, there was some other problem with the third fight, referee error, etc. Right? Understand, the guys waiting to fight Canelo at 168, Billy Joe Saunders, Callum Smith, Caleb Plant, David Benavides, would be left out of the Canelo gravy train. Let me also say, too, that the complaint and comments made to the public by the people involved are interesting because apparently the zone did not consider unbeaten Billy Joe Saunders to be a premier opponent. Now understand, I happen to think that Billy Joe Saunders has a very good chance of winning the fight outright. What I believe fighters are figuring out is when you sign contracts or when your promoter signs contracts that have words that are vague and ambiguous like premier opponent, you have your back against the wall. According to rumor, Gary Russell was picked by Devin Haney. And Haney apparently, according to rumor, is pitching in money to make the fight happen. I'm guessing Haney, who has his own contract with the zone, understood that he needed to satisfy the premier opponent language of the contract. By the way, when I say Haney has his own contract with the zone, I really mean to say Haney's promoter. Well, just understand the pressure that places on the fighter that gamblers can benefit from. We'll talk about this in another video, but I don't think Haney, even though he's trained recently with Floyd Mayweather, I don't think Haney's ready for Gary Russell. But if you've signed a contract and you've gotten big money, and you're supposed to deliver premier opposition, whether you're ready or not to keep that contract going, you have to fight the Gary Russells of the world. Russell, by the way, has been champ now for something like five years. Five years. Let's shift gears. Let's talk about Errol Spence against Danny Garcia. Now, in betting, sometimes you bet on the players, right? You say, you know, this guy is better than that guy. I'm going to go with the guy I think's better. Sometimes you bet on the situations, right? We now know that people in the know knew that Roberto Duran, before his rematch against Ray Leonard, was badly overweight, had to lose a lot of weight to fight Ray that second time. So even though a studious gambler could have looked at the two guys and could have thought, you know, Duran can beat Ray, Hell, Duran's already beaten Ray. Right? The advantages Duran had in the first fight, why can't he have them in the second fight? Those gamblers lost out to the crowd that looked at the situation. Right? The second fight is different, isn't it? Ray Leonard is fast. Ray Leonard's a great athlete. Roberto Duran, older fighter now has to lose a lot of weight to deal with Ray Leonard. So, of course, that fight's the no-moss fight. 
right? Duran can't keep up with Ray, who, of course, decides in the second fight, let me use my legs. So he's moving around the ring, making it hard for Duran, who he understood had to lose well more than 10 pounds for the fight. I'll give you another example. Apparently, after Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas gained a lot of weight. Now, in the heavyweight division, there's no weight limit. But you still have to show up in shape for big fights, especially when you're fighting Evanda Holofield. So people understood. Evanda Holofield was in great shape for that fight, right? He's always in great shape, isn't he? Buster Douglas, by contrast, was wearing vinyl suits. He had some ridiculous agreement with the Las Vegas casino where he was having his training camp out in public. People saw that Douglas, in the few months after he beat Mike Tyson, had gained a lot of weight was trying to lose weight against a cruiserweight, now heavyweight, who was fast by comparison, who could move around the ring by comparison, who had great legs, who wasn't going to be at the end of Douglas's jab, like Mike Tyson was. So, Evander Holyfield caught Buster Douglas on a night where Douglas wasn't physically at his best. Douglas did not make it out of the early rounds. Now this fight, to me, is a situation fight. I believe we have a live underdog in the fight. Danny Garcia. Let's talk about why. Now you're Errol Spence. You're 5'9", and you weigh 147 pounds. What I want people to do right now is to just pause for a second and think about the males they know who are 5'9 and how much they weigh. Right? I'm just telling you, just use common sense. You've seen guys like Canelo, Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather over their careers gain weight as they've gotten older. Right? You go to a high school reunion, right? Your 10-year reunion, your 15-year reunion. And you're going to notice some of the people have filled out a bit. They were a little bit heavier, right? If you're a fan of basketball, you look at old films of people like Shaquille O'Neal, and you're astonished at how skinny he was when he was in Orlando Magic. Now, to me, when I see a tall guy, Callum Smith, at 168 pounds, I believe he's 6'3", when I see a tall guy like that squeezing into a low weight, and that guy is in his late 20s, I know it's a matter of time before that guy has to move up in weight. Even very well-trained athletes who are having a lot of success end up moving up. So, the undisputed champ at one point, at 140 pounds, Terrence Crawford, leaves the weight class, is now fighting at 147. The undisputed champ at cruiserweight, Alexander Usyk, leaves the weight class, is now fighting at heavyweight. So I'm looking at Errol Spence. It's not a fight, fight, fight day type thing. Right now, I'm looking at Errol Spence from a few feet away, his career, right? And I'm thinking sooner or later, Errol Spence, who's a power puncher, who has an 80% plus KO percentage at 147 pounds, I'm thinking Errol Spence is going to have to move up to 154. So after Errol Spence beat Mikey Garcia, in my opinion, he only had two fights left at 147 pounds. If it's about legacy, he only had two fights left. Let me also say this too. We know that 
styles make fights. We know that some styles are kryptonite for other styles. So when Errol Spence has climbed the mountain, when many people in boxing are openly wondering whether Errol Spence is the best pound for pound, when he beats Mikey Garcia in a fight, I thought Mikey Garcia was going to win. And he does it in a way where even Mikey Garcia knows I lost this fight by several rounds. You understand the only two guys who, in my opinion, he should have fought after that were the fighter I consider to be the best in the sport pound for pound. The previously mentioned Terrence Crawford, right? Still unbeaten. Understand, this is Crawford's second act after a Hall of Fame career that had him be undisputed at 140. Right, Crawford could walk away right now he's in the Hall of Fame. No, Crawford's sticking around. Right, he's gained some weight. He's like, okay, well, let me prove I'm the best at 147. If you Google Spence and Crawford, you're going to see videos of them running into each other. And, of course, both guys are claiming to want the fight. I believe Crawford. I believe Spence at one point wanted to fight Crawford. Let's name the second guy. He also, if he decides to walk away from the sport, is a first ballot Hall of Famer, and that's Manny Pacquiao. Right? Pacquiao's in his 40s. People have to realize that Pacquiao doesn't have a lot of time left in the sport. Understand, he's in his 40s, not at heavyweight, at welterweight. So if you want to fight Manny Pacquiao, the time is now. Understand, too, you have a lot of older guys getting back in the sport, right? Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, right? They're in their mid-50s. Evanda Holofield, even older than that. Manny Pacquiao is still in the sport, and you have to tell people, no, no, he's not on the senior citizen circuit. Manny Pacquiao is the guy who beat an unbeaten Keith Thurman. Understand, only two guys have beaten Danny Garcia. Keith Thurman's one of them. Right, Manny Pacquiao is still fighting the likes of Adrian Broner, who he beat. Manny's a historical fighter. So if you're Errol Spence, and it's about legacy, those were the two fights to fight. The last people you want to fight are the tough guys, the KG vets, the proven guys at 147 who, for one reason or another, lost to Keith Thurman, right? Both of these guys suffered that loss, aren't viewed on the same plane as you. We all knew that Sean Porter is tough. We knew that. Well, the bottom line is Errol Spence, after beating Mikey Garcia, decides to fight Sean Porter. Mistake. That's one of Errol Spence's most grueling fights. Many of you here online, and I hear you loud and clear, believe that Sean Porter won that fight. Understand, Spence, when he's not on his back foot, humiliating Mikey Garcia, and let me say I was shocked by the performance. But Errol Spence is really a short-range hooker. But understand, one way to mess with a short-range hooker who's trying to muscle you, throw shots, hit your head, and stuff like that, is to bend at the waist. Once you do that, it takes your body out of the equation. If you're a vet, like Sean Porter, you can do things like hide your head behind your shoulder as you're putting it close to the guy's chest, have your hand as a arm bar to prevent uppercuts, so you get protection on this side and from below, and then, of course, you can have this hand up. Understand, Sean Porter, against Errol Spence, is showing you how to fight inside. 
right? He comes in. He's crowding Errol Spence. Spence doesn't. A short-range hooker doesn't have room to hit him. Has to continually reset. Now, I thought Spence won that fight, but I thought that fight was grueling. Folks, that's the last fight. Errol Spence has had. And even though Errol Spence's record says that he's unbeaten, we know he has one loss. And that loss is to his car, the one he totaled. Right? Understand, it's not just about wins and losses in the ring. Errol Spence got beaten up by that car crash that he had in the period of time after the Sean Porter fight, much worse than any boxing match he had. Why doesn't that count? If we're talking about Errol Spence's chances of winning his upcoming fight, don't you have to think to yourself, okay, well, how beaten up is Spence? We know Sean Porter landed a hell of a lot of shots on him. Then we know his car really totaled him, right? Spence gave interviews afterwards saying, gee, he thought his career might be over. Folks, that car crash roughed him up. Google the photos of Spence's car. That car was totaled. Now, as I said in a recent earlier video, I believe fighters are just like the rest of us, right? If I ever survive a plane crash, you're not going to see my bald ass on a plane again anytime soon, right? We have trauma. It's not just physical trauma. It's also mental trauma. You start to realize how fragile things are, right? You wake up in the morning and you're glad to be awake. Now you're not taking it for granted. Well, all I'm saying is Spence just had one of the toughest fights of his life in the ring. Sean Porter. Fight goes the distance. Tough. No room for error. Late in that fight. The fight hung in the balance. Then he follows that up with a major car crash that left him injured. In need of time to recover. Now forgive me, if I'm Errol Spence and I'm unbeaten, well, I'm going to fight Manny Pacquiao, or I'm going to fight Errol Spence, excuse me, I'm going to fight Terrence Crawford, right? My attitude is going to be, hey, maybe I've been roughed up a bit. I might as well find out right now how far I can take this. What I'm not going to do is to fight tough Danny Garcia. Understand, Danny's a puncher. Danny's a little bit different than Errol. Danny's a mid-range hooker. Right? Danny has only lost two fights. The Keith Thurman fight, split decision. And the Sean Porter fight, two of the judges had that fight 115-113. Danny has spent his career fighting tough guys. Right, look at his record. He fought El Terrible, for example. Right, this is a guy who's fought many tough guys. Danny doesn't dodge. High caliber competition. Eventually, he ends up in the ring with them. That's why he's fighting Errol Spence. Now, let's be clear. I don't believe that sparring is the same as the real event. Right? You go to one of these wedding rehearsals, okay, maybe everyone's in the same place where they're going to be for the wedding, right? But then when the wedding day comes, you understand this is different. Right? This is the main event. It's different. If you get nervous, chances are you're not going to be nervous at the rehearsal. You're going to be nervous for the main event. 
I believe Errol Spence is going to get in the ring. Then he's going to find that Danny Garcia, mid-range hooker, high action, two-handed, is going to force him to fight. To win the fight, Spence either is going to have to try to collapse the pocket on Danny, who I call the mid-range hooker, I'll concede he has a straight right hand when he wants it. Right? Understand, Danny wants a pocket form. He wants the fight to be rough and tumble. Or Spence is going to have to do what Keith Thurman did at times. Move away from Danny. Force a mid-range hooker to turn by using lateral movement. That requires a lot of effort. That requires a lot of sharpness. That requires a lot of coordination that I don't think a guy is going to have his first fight back from a major car accident. Right? Forgive me. But I'm a skeptic here based on the situation. If this were prime Errol Spence against prime Danny Garcia, I'd probably take Spence. And I know in interviews Right? Fighters love to say, oh, that problem, that's behind me. Right? Oh, that plane I was in, that crash, that's behind me. I'm okay. I'm ready to fight this weekend. Right? I'm a skeptic on that. Now, you mean to tell me that I get a fighter the caliber of Danny Garcia, right? Split decision loss to Keith Thurman when they're both unbeaten. Right? Goes the distance with Sean Porter. 115-113 on two of the judges' scorecards. Those are the only losses. Very highly thought of amateur. Big time experience. You mean to tell me that I'm getting underdog odds on Danny Garcia against a guy who just had a car accident that by his own admission at times had him thinking his career was over? I'll be the casino's Huckleberry. I'm not saying Danny Garcia is better than Errol Spence. All I need for him to be is better than Errol Spence in Spence's first fight back from a major calamity after the most grueling fight of his career. The bet I like here is the underdog. Simply to win, you're getting far better than even money odds. Hedged with Errol Spence by KO. I'll agree, punchers only have to be right once. Right? Errol Spence could show up, could not quite have the normal coordination, could not quite be sharp, but if he lands the right way, okay, that'll make up for a lot. Right? So I'm taking the underdog here. I'm hedging to play with the favorite by stoppage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.